Today we continue with our career program and today we are going to discuss one of the most prestigious careers in India, the IAS, IFS, IPS programs. It is prestigious because once you qualify for this particular exam, you then are in government service and you can start at the bottom but you can reach right at the top. That means to the point of becoming an ambassador of our country, uh, inspector general of police or a secretary to either the chief minister of Goa or even the prime minister of India. So this is a prestigious exam and naturally it is very tough. So in order to assist the Goan students in Goa to get into this stream, the Don Bosco Academy has started what is known as the National IS Talent Search Program. And this program is going to start absolutely on Republic Day, the 26th of January 2020. And the actual training will begin in February 2020. Now to tell us more about this program, we have the coordinator of this academy, IAS Academy, Sarah Fernandez, who is going to tell us all about it so that you keep glued, you understand what it's all about, and come on the 26th of January, appear for this search talent program, and if you're selected, you will be under training, and then hopefully you become an IAS officer sometime in the next year. So we go straight to Sarah Fernandez. Sarah, thank you very much for sparing time to come and tell us about this program. So yeah. tell us, what and where will this national talent search exam uh, commence? Well, this, uh, on the occasion of the 71st Republic Day of India, we will be having this uh, exam conducted in Don Bosco, Don Bosco premises, um, on the 26th. It falls on a Saturday Hello. at 11. 11 o'clock, yeah. Right. Okay, and uh, what is the basic qualification one needs to come to appear for this talent search? Now, for this particular exam, they only require the graduation. Okay. Now, graduation in any field, in any field is fine. And even if the student has not completed their graduation and they are still in their TY, they can bring in their first year and second year mark sheets. All and right. they will be able to answer the exam. Okay, so any graduate in any field is is uh, qualified to appear for this talent search program. Now, tell me one thing, Sarah. Is this uh, is there an uh, age limit for this program? Yes, there is. There is. There is an age limit. Now, for this exam, they require to be twenty years. Twenty years old. Yeah. Twenty years and more. That's the minimum. Okay. okay? They need to be twenty years as of first uh, of August this year okay right 2020 okay and uh, is there a maximum also there is a maximum um, for this exam i'm talking about this exam uh, the talent search exam regarding the actual exam there is a separate age limit oh, okay, okay? Right, okay for this particular exam that i'm talking about the scholarship exam yeah the age limit would be 30 years so any student who is currently in the final year of graduation mm -hmm or he has just passed his graduation and he's yes. 20 years old, is eligible to apply? For the coaching. For the program, okay. And uh, 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 what does the eligibility mean in terms of the uh, final exam? Is there anything uh, different? Yes. Now for the final exam, the UPSC exam, the civil services exam, there the student, in the year that the student is answering the exam, the student needs to be 21 years old as of 1st of August that year that he's answering. So even if the student is in the TY, has answered his TY exams, not yet received his results, but he can apply for the initial exam, the prelim exam, and he can give his exam as well, even though he's not got his mark sheet as yet. Okay, But by the time he goes in for the next level of the exam, means he needs to have his graduation certificate in hand. Now, I was told that this particular series of tests are very, very tough. Now, let us say that somebody has managed to fail the first level or first round. Can he appear again? Yes, he can appear again the following year, the oh. next year. He ah. has to reapply and he can give that exam all over again. So, 
Is there a limit to the number of times you can appear for this exam? Yes. Now, if you fall uh, in the general category, if, you're, if you fall in the general caste, then you can give the exam up to six times. You have six attempts, but within your age limit, within 32 years. Okay. Okay. So within your, from within 21 to 31. So you're anywhere between 21 and 31. Yes. And you have managed to fail first, second, third, fourth, fifth. You can appear for the sixth, provided you're below 31. That's uh, very interesting because... Within, within 31, because if you are 32 and giving the interview, you cannot be over 32. Oh, oh you're goodness, not eligible. Yeah. Okay. You know, India has got lots of languages. Yes. Uh, you know, you go to South uh, India, one type of language, you go to North, etc., etc. Et so, what is the preferred language or languages to appear for this exam? You can answer in any language, really. Any language? Yes. So, even Konkani will do? Yes. Okay, and English is necessary? English is very necessary because so that's English one of your main papers. So, English and is fine? Um, see, when you're answering these papers, you have to choose English as a language. You can also, if you require, if you want to answer in any of the languages, you can opt for it. Okay, you have to, uh, when you are enrolling for the UPSC exam, you have to mention which language you're answering in. Now, when you're answering the exam, English in your main, when you go to this level 2, English is a main language which you okay. have to answer and you have to clear that subject. And you have any other language, it's an optional subject. You choose any subject you like to answer. Okay. Okay, but English is a main topic. You have to know English. Right. Now, you mentioned that uh, any uh, degree is good enough. What about the person itself? What kind of a personality one needs to have or aptitude one needs to have to be able you to need, really do well in this particular? Yes. You really need good, very good high IQ level. Uh -huh. Okay. You need to be a really, really hard worker, a very, very persevering kind of person. Um, you need to be a person who, no matter what happens, you are not going to back down. Even if everybody else around you decides to, they start, you know, losing their self-confidence, you need to be keeping on moving ahead. Uh -huh. You need to have a very, very strong personality. Oh, wonderful. My goodness. So, you, you, you heard that. A fast learner. You just cannot give up. Because once you have decided that you want to become an IAS officer or an IPS officer or an IFS officer for that matter, you just have to keep going, keep going, break your last breath on this so that you can do it. Absolutely. Now, uh, tell me, um, besides all this uh, uh, thing, how does it really start? Now, you passed your IAS your test, mm -hmm. you've been selected, what happens next? Now, once you have, you see, first of all, let me explain to you the rounds. Okay. okay. Now, when you go in for the first round, the first level is called the preliminary phase. Right. Now, at this preliminary phase, you are given only two question papers, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. One is based on your CSAT and one is your general studies. Ah. Both are optional. It's, uh, it's not supposed to be as tough as the next round, but okay. it's quite tough. You clear the first round, only after that you get, in for the, you get into the next round, which is the main, it's called the main phase, the main stage. When you go into this main stage, you have to answer around nine papers altogether, okay? Nine papers, two papers given to you on one day, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. Only after you clear all the nine papers, now from those main papers, you have two language papers. Those language papers are only qualifying nature. They, you don't, uh, your rank, your marks are not counted from those papers, your qualifying papers, the language papers. Only if you clear the language papers, then the marks that you have, uh, that you have actually gained in the rest of your, uh, the remaining seven papers will be counted in your final ranking. And there, there is no passing percentage. It's just the top 3,000 that will finally go in for the interview, the third phase. At the interview, only the top 1,000 candidates will finally get through. Now, those that finally get through, the top 1,000, depending on the kind of vacancies that there are, the creamiest section, the top 100, will move into the IAS. Will move to? IAS. Only the top 100? Only the top 100. Only the creamiest section. So, that means those that will get the highest ranks. So, the top rankers go in for IAS. Okay, and wow. then depending on your rank, there are many, many jobs available. There are many other ranks. Uh, okay. So, depending on your rank, you go in. Does, uh, does a candidate have an option to choose? Suppose he wants to be in, in the IFS. 
Uh, he doesn't get a chance to choose. It all depends on his rank. All right. Okay. Now, if he gets the highest rank, supposing he gets a rank where he is, where he can go in for IAS, but he chooses not to go in for IAS and he wants to go in for the lower ranks, the posts at the lower ranks, IFS or IPS, he can do so. That he can choose. But IFS he cannot, meaning Indian Foreign Service. Yes, Indian Foreign Service. That is considered second rank. That is, uh, yeah, that is the second rank. Oh wow! I see. Okay. So, okay, so now you have done the test for, the, for this uh, entry to the IAS coaching camp and you are selected. Uh, what are the fees that the student has to pay to, to continue? Okay. Now, regarding the fees, um, we charge them 70,000 plus there is a GST of 18 percent. 70,000 plus GST of 18 percent, that's almost 90,000. It comes to around 82,600. All right, okay. <laughs> All right, 82,000, okay. But then you are saying that you are also offering a scholarship. So who does get the scholarship? Now, when we are offering the scholarship exam, students that answer the scholarship exam, once they have cleared this exam with a 75% and more percentage, then we will be offering them the scholarship discount. All right. And what is the scholarship? The scholarship discount is about 26% on the tuition fees. So. You have paid 70,000 plus 18 percent GST. Mm -hmm. You have come into the program, you are doing your program, you have done 75 percent of real work and you have your re 75 percent level. Yes. Then uh, Don Bosco will offer you a 26 percent reduction in the fees. Yes. Uh, not the entire fees, in the course fees. There you the have it. Fees. I mean, 70,000 in Goa itself, I think it's, it's, it's very cheap, really very cheap because the program is so intense so tough so this thing, unless you are thoroughly prepared there is no way you're going to become an IAS officer so think about it tell your parent that you have invested peanuts literally peanuts because I am not only going to earn a lot of money when I am an IAS officer but the prestige I will enjoy as an IAS officer and a government uh, person is absolutely fantastic so 70,000 really is quite, quite cheap. Yes, and it. the f fact is that for the first time, this is available in Goa itself. So that is a big plus for the Goan student. And the other tragedy in Goa is that not many students go for this program. A, because it is tough and B, there, because there was no training earlier. So that gate has been opened now. The training is available right here in the Panjim city. and but you'll have to work hard. So uh, this, uh, uh, you said the IES is the highest level and then IPS, uh, IFS and then IPS, IPS. and all the, uh, all the rest of them. Yes. There are so, 24 different uh, uh, services. Is there any way the, the selectors tell you that this might be better for you rather than that? Is it or you have really a choice? You don't have a choice. Don't have a choice, okay. They inform you. you all right. it, it all depends on your ranking. What rank you get, you, get, you oh, go okay. into that area. And you, uh, suppose you don't like it then? I don't think you are really not going to like it because what happens is once you have joined any, any, any service that is in the government, uh, you have an option of re-answering this exam, oh. going through the whole process again, bettering your ranking, and moving up the ladder. Oh, I see. Okay. So there you hear it now. So suppose you didn't do as well, but you are selected and you are put in one of the lower categories of the IFS system. You still have a choice by re-answering the exam and then saying, no, I want to go for the IFS. My ultimate ambition is to be the ambassador of our country. And there you have it. Did you know that Julius Ribeiro was an IPS officer? And he ultimately became an ambassador of our country. He was probably one of the first Goans who became an IPS officer. There were a few others like Mr. Bartiker and Mr. D'Souza and all. But this guy, he not only became an IPS Inspector General of Police, but later on was promoted to the, to, at, at the ambassadorial level. Interesting. Okay. Now, uh, this particular group that is training the students, mm -hmm. Are they only training in Goa or they are nationwide? Nationwide. Now, um, ALS, where they have these classes in Delhi, 
they conduct this program in such a manner they have around 81 plus centers all over india so and these this training is conducted via vsat okay it's an online training program so the same kind of class which is given to goa the same class at the same time it's uh, aired all over india at the same time so it's the same teacher teaching the same kind of material the same material goes everywhere the same the same facilities everywhere all over india around 80 85 plus almost 91 different centers all over india so this is beam from delhi to goa yes. so you all have all the facilities in don bosco to be able to receive the program yes. for the student to get all the books etc yes. etc and and continue with the work yes and students receiving this kind of training have already cleared in the past they have already got higher high rankings mm -hmm. the real exam uh, for the real upsc exam mm -hmm. is going to be sometime in uh, when this year now for this uh, 2020 exam uh, the date that has been given by upsc is uh, 31st of may okay all right the exam is on the 31st of so none of this batch will qualify for that no the batch that is currently the batch that is going to answer the exam no students who have already undergone training with us coaching with us since last year they will be answering this time in 2020 right, okay and uh, therefore they they really have to work to make sure that they are the same yes. now uh, you have cleared your training you have prepared for the exam sometime next year mm -hmm. you passed the various three levels preliminary main interviews you have passed your qualified what happens next once you have already cleared you will get a letter you will get a call letter upsc will send a letter an application letter wherein the, you get a call to come for the training now this training is going to be in masuri masuri yeah, yeah okay and this the training over there it will be for a period of about 2 years okay and there also they have three levels at the training and once they have successfully completed the training then they are appointed then they are given what do you mean three levels yes they have three levels of the program over there all right okay and this is a full time program in masuri for full 2 years for full 2 years do they get any salary for this time yes. they, How get, much they, do they get? get a salary they don't get a salary they, they get, get a stipend? stipend okay they get a stipend um it's somewhere ranging in between almost 40 40000 rupees yes. a month yes. what is the first level mm -hmm. of employment you get having cleared all this heavy hard work uh, uh it is as a, you get a cadet allotment that means uh, certain states are put together into something called a zone zonal states so you get to choose one of those cadet allotments whichever you prefer the candidate gets to choose so a person who is from goa mm -hmm. can he choose goa he cannot choose only specifically goa oh. goa will be among one of the states in the cadet allotment in that particular group i yes. see okay, okay and suppose he does choose he won't get it he does earlier he used to earlier uh -huh. but now things have changed the uh, the whole the whole thing has changed All so right. now you don't get to really choose you get to choose your cadet allotment oh okay is is, uh, is there a fixed term after having done the first job mm -hmm. to get the next promotion or is it uh, on get, merit you get a promotion after every 5 or 6 years okay so it is not merit it is based on your experience Ah, so based on exper experience. Okay, right. Okay, and uh, at the first level, what is the salary? First level, anywhere ranging in between fifty-five thousand to eighty-five thousand. In that fifty thousand to eighty-five thousand. Fifty-five, yeah, around that. And all of your allowances are paid for. All of your expenses are paid for. You ha you get a lot of allowances. This is just the basic pay. That means you get free housing, free motor car. Everything. free uh, free ticketing driver, uh, around the free world cook. Uh, yes okay, everything wow. is available so in effect you get uh, maybe a couple of lakhs per month you don't get it in your hand not in you the hand but you know basic. like medical bill uh, everything is looked after by the government uh, right, okay. it's paid for so what is your choice i would suggest that if you are really good in your studies and you're also a person who reads and understand what's happening in our country and you are able to say to yourself i can clear this this is for you so go for it 
be the pride of Goa and go on the 26th of January for this uh, selection procedure and if you can do it you will bring a lot of honor to your family to yourself and to the state of Goa. I thank you uh, Sarah for sparing your time with us thank you. and I'm sure the initiative Don Bosco has taken will give us a lot of dividends not only this year but in the years to come. Yes. So thank you very much and continue the good work you're doing. Thank you.